Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12, where I am once again testing the rocket sled, and I've made some improvements. First of all, on the Orion space plane, I have cut open a door and the appropriate colliders for said door. Uh, previously, the Orion space plane only had a hatch on the top, not a side door like an airliner, but now it has side doors like an airliner, one on each side. And that's why I've got two towers. Technically, I should probably only have one open on one side. Uh, that would save some trouble. But, well, we have, we, have, we have two of them. And it is my intention to have a Kerbal walk-in. And then I also have made the little radio booster packs. So rocket-assisted takeoff boosters. They're the same uh, stats as the ones that were procedural. But they look nicer. They're not just... Uh, previously, we had three of them on the couplers that uh, were bulky, and instead of having just three, now we have arrays of four for each one, and that looks nicer. And in particular, I've made a, an animation so that they can straighten up like that. So then we can just tuck them in instead of trying to decouple them, because uh, frankly, decoupling them was always a dangerous thing to do. Uh, that does add six tons of dry mass to the whole thing in addition to whatever residuals we end up having. So that's not wonderful, but with the Orion space plane, the Orion carrier plane already has too much performance. Uh, we actually have to dump fuel on the way down in order to have it survive. So let's put at least one Kerbal in and instead of all these command chairs, I'm gonna have Marsha, oh no, not not just check mark because that puts it into the first seat. Let's let's have two Kerbals go in. Marsha on the axis level and then Lanbo. Okay. So taking it outside, making sure that we are going to the Tampico spawn. And let's see how it works, because this this is all very tight now. You can see where the wing clears the towers. Okay, so definite or order of operations. Aim camera. And then over here, we're going to just use transfer crew to have them EVA. I haven't made it so that they go from the bottom all the way up. There's no elevator right now. They just plop out here. And over we go. Uh, because of things shaking, they somehow sometimes hop around. Oh, we can have the helmet removed temporarily. Uh, but I should probably add that on before it goes into space because the, the cabin... There's no way to tell Kerbal that the cabin is okay for them. So it's like this. The Pan American on the side is offset right now because the door is open. Once the door closes, it'll say Pan American properly. I, yeah, I don't know why they sort of stop and then hop a little bit, but that's just been happening. I think it's because the whole thing is shaking. You know, the whole platform with the rocket sled track. Okay, so walked in and we can have them go into this part here. The cockpit is in the front there, but, uh, well, any seat will do. So, board command chair. Okay, but I need to get back to her and put her helmet, her helmet back on. I'll just leave the helmet on the other one. Yeah, let's just aim camera. It's a little bit tough. What happens is, right now, the camera is aimed at the center of mass of the whole thing. And once we decouple the spacecraft, it'll be at the center of mass of the spacecraft, uh, so the space plane plus the, cent the Orion carrier plane. However, we don't want to do that before uh, retracting these access arms because they're a little bit clipped in and things might explode, so. Okay, equip the helmet. No, oh, maybe the whole thing has settled down more, and so the Kerbal's not hopping. Oh, come on this way.
Well, this is this is a thing you haven't seen in Kerbal. <laughs> I don't know. My guess is nobody's done this before. They've they've had Kerbals go into craft. I know that. Yes, but have Kerbals go into a track? Uh, go into a craft that's gonna launch via a rocket sled? Not so much. Okay. Board command chair. Okay. And of course I've action grouped the access arms, so access arms retract. <laughs> uh, that clearance is a little bit tight, uh, but it is a vertical clearance. Okay, closing the doors. Very nice. And releasing it onto the track. Now, if uh, anything goes wrong, I'm going to have to do that all over again. <laughs> Alright, let's see. boosters. Well, we're clear. Did we get the body flaps? No, the body flaps did get killed. The problem is the body flaps are hitting the mount. The thing that this is mounted on. And and let's retract these little boosters. There's actually two models necessary because the right ones have to rotate. There's a different animation for the right ones versus the left ones. You can't just symmetrize it like that. Yeah, so it's hitting the mount and the body flap's hitting the mount and Pekka suggested that I just make sort of a, a strut like mount. Oh, this is not going well, is it? It's not, uh, it's, it's gotten into the bad situation. Why have you gotten into the bad situation? The bad situation is the reason why we have the pitch go to 45 degrees at the end of the track is so that it goes up. Right now it's not going up. It can't get to its target pitch. Uh, maybe the center of mass is too far forward because of the little booster packs? If I turn the booster packs, is that going to help anything? Anyway, it's probably already done for. The roll is weird too. No, well actually turning the booster pack seems to have helped. Or not. <laughs> and then it plunges. Oh, this ain't great. I think it's the loss of the body flap too, but I don't know why it's rolled this way. Why is it rolled off to the side like this? It was tough because uh, I can't put these in symmetry. It might be that they're a little bit off. But would that have a huge effect? The ones on the left hand side to be moved uh, need to be moved further back, I think. I, I don't think it's gonna get to a good enough apoapsis like this. Anyway, this this has gone bad. So Okay, maybe a little bit further back on these. I don't know. It just seemed that way on the outside. I don't know if that'll help preserve the body flap. Well, having demonstrated the uh, Kerbal boarding, I'm not going to do that again. We we know that they can do that. The access arm and all that business works. So let's just try the main system. But yeah, this mount is what's the problem. So once it separates, the body flap still hits that mount. And Pekka suggested having a retracting mount. So that it'd have to... Uh, do that really quickly. The problem is things don't always work exactly the same each time you try it out. There is variation. Maybe the drag from my boosters is just a lot more than the drag from the procedural part SRBs. But I think maybe just losing the body flap is the worst thing. Well, something blew up. Um, let's 
seems like we have the body flap this time. And now we're pitched up okay. Don't know why the body flap has that much influence on that, but it seemed to pitch up pretty well before. Maybe I'll just wait on retracting those, just so it doesn't throw it off. But something blew up back there. It did collide with the body flap, it's just that it didn't actually kill the body flap this time. Well, let's see... Nope. Let's see if something suddenly horrible happens when I do toggle the action group for those... No, it, it seems the same, so okay. Well, it just happened to work this time. I think keeping the body flap is pretty important for us to keep this pitch up. We can't actually get to the target pitch. You can see it's using as much as possible. Now, why the body flap should have that much influence, you'll have to ask far. You gotta try and get the space plane into orbit and then jump back to the carrier plane to land it. Okay, separation. Okay. That's ignited its engines. I want this to kill rotation right now. We'll catch up with it later, but... Don't want it to do anything drastic, like point in the opposite direction. It could take a while to straighten it up. So with KOS, you can jump between vessels as long as they're in render range of, range of each other. I don't know about doing things out of render range. I don't think it can. Okay, it's in orbit. Oh, I don't want it to do anything else. Okay, yeah, it's coming down. Nope, plus and zero, roll, all right. So, need to dump fuel, because it never needed this much. But if we underfuel it on the rocket sled, the rocket sled's going to end up getting dumped off the track. It needs the payload to be a certain mass, you see. Well, within a certain mass range, it does not be exact. Really important we do that before it starts hitting the rough part of the atmosphere during the live stream when I started testing some of this stuff, uh, testing the recovery of the Ryan Carey plane in particular after doing the rocket sled deal. Uh, I accidentally left the fuel in and it blew up. <laughs> uh, the little separatrons will blow up. I'll have to make special separatrons. Uh oh, I forgot to improve the heating on the on the radio boosters. I'll do that. Well, all the radio boosters gonna blow up. Or, unfortunately, maybe three will stay. Gosh darn it. Two on one side and one on the other is the worst. Well, okay. Three on one side and none on the other would be the worst, but still. This is not helpful. Yeah. All right, well, anyway, I'll fix the heating situation now. And I should make custom separatrons for the Orion carrier plane so those little ones don't blow up. The next thing is really making sure we have the station for the space plane to rendezvous with up there and then doing the rendezvous. The whole, in 2001 A Space Odyssey, the station rotates and then the space plane also rotates in order to go into the bay with the station, and that's a whole other deal. The rotation part makes me worried. Our trajectory looks like this, so we're south of the runway, between Florida and Cuba, as intended. We can see the main island, well, not the main island, well, it's the largest island of the Bahamas, but it's not the one with the capital on it, so. But the largest island of the Bahamas is in front of us there. I generally don't try to take control until Mach 5, at most. Okay, all right. Turning. Turning. 
And this is meant to be automated, not piloted. You can see the runway over there. All right, coming in. Okay, judicious use of air brakes here. Well, if I was cheaty, I could uh, just have the crash tolerance of the body flaps be really high. Uh, I mean, it is just that mount that's the problem. But yeah, maybe a retracting mount, if it can retract quickly enough, would work out. This is only a 12 degree pitch down. Shuttle came in in that like 20. Well, not right at the end though. Okay, we're on the ground. I do have drag chutes, and I probably should use them. I used too much runway. Well, I don't know, drag chutes didn't do anything this time. Okay, alright, well, we used this part, but we're here. So, that works out. Uh, we do have to dump fuel to make it work out. But we, I've already upped the heat tolerance on these in the configuration files, so hopefully they won't explode in the future. Uh, but more work needs to be done on the reliability of the thing and making sure that the body flap doesn't die. So I think the key to that will be having the retractable mount, and so that's a new part I have to make. And I'll get that ready, and also next time we'll try to have the station in orbit for the space plane to go to. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.